Mix It With Mike plugin of the week comes from Three Body Technology. It is the Cenozoics Compressor. Uh, this is uh, named after some long time ago place far away, or actually right here when the dinosaurs died, that period afterwards. And out of the ashen rock that was left came this compressor, little known to humanity, but now known to you. We bring you the Cenozoics Compressor. All right, so what does that mean? It's total BS. Let's get right to the review. What we have is a compressor with a lot of controls on it. So what I want to try to do here is sort of break it down in a simplified way. Um, we could go over like all of the settings. There's all kinds of fun stuff you could do, changing the display colors and all of that sort of stuff. No reason, reason to go for that. If you load it up and you don't have um, the uh, threshold area or the knee area, you can uh, open that up uh, over here. This ends up being important, allows you to adjust the threshold, but also as you adjust things like knee settings and stuff like that, you'll see the graphic reflected here in that. So that becomes important. It also shows you waveform displays and game reduction, which you'll see in the window over here to the right. Uh, so you'll actually see, see the shape of the game reduction go by in real time, plus see uh, the audio waveform uh, input and uh, post-processing, what it looks like. Input and output level controls with the game reduction displayed here, uh, so you can see that. Um, here are all of your compressor settings. Uh, we'll go over that. That's where we'll spend the majority of the time. There's also a sidechain filter, which opens up down here at the bottom, so it pushes the compressor. Uh, compressor settings up and then you could adjust your side, side chain filter. There's lots of options in here including left right linking by percentage which is quite cool. Uh, you could have it operate in a variety of different modes just to the mid, just to the side, mid triggering the side, side triggering the mid, all kinds of unusual things plus there's an external key uh, if your DAW supports, which is also available. That's as much as I will go there. Uh, all of the other things like turning oversampling on, there are a lot of debates about the oversampling. One of the things that's a unique feature of it is they've done a form of oversampling or what they call ADAA, adaptive anti-aliasing. Uh, it's some, it's some, some form of a processing algorithm, which as I understand it only applies the aliasing during the time of attack and release. So basically where you need it, so it's not operating all the time, thus being less of a CPU load. Um, I'm not going to get into a whole thing about that and whether that works. There's too many amazing features to cover here, so we'll focus on that. And uh, let's get started with it. So if you look at the three knobs here that have the pink coloring on them, those are the primary knobs. Your threshold, right? There's a ratio right next to that. Attack and release. But... Those are the primary three knobs that you'll be working with, and almost everything else is just an adaptation or a way of shaping um, uh, shaping the uh, characteristics of the attack and release. So if we uh, start from there, we have a couple of ways to go. One of the ways to go is to start with a particular uh, preset of some kind. And what we have, if you open up here, what this will do is sort of give you a pre-configuration of particular settings. You'll notice that there is a whole series here of vintage options. So what this is doing, this is not emulating an SSL uh, e-channel uh, compressor. Um, what it's emulating is the attack and release characteristics, the shape of them, and building that into the settings. So what it's doing is it's adapting or adjusting so you get those characteristics. But as you go through all of the other vintage processors here, you're not getting op amps emulated, saturation characteristics emulated. There's nothing in that. So, um, so if you go there, you're not getting an API 2500. You're getting the characteristics of the attack and release curve that uh, is has been created by API. So what we have is these options here. Brit VCA is a, a SSL EG channel, I guess. Glue is the SSL bus compressor, API 2500. Black VCA, uh, DBX160. Red VCA. Uh, one that's not talked about a lot, the Red Series, Red 3 uh, compressor by Focusrite. I believe that's what we have there. Distortion VCA, there seems to be some uh, uh, debate about this. Mm, uh, my understanding is is that it uh, um, is the uh, distressor, excuse me, 
although I'm not sure entirely if that's a BCA, but that would be the only question mark on my end. Black FET and Blue FET is 1176. Vintage Opto is LA2A. Bridge Diode is either 33609 or the 2254 Neve compressor. Uh, virtual Mu, uh, I assume this is probably the Manly Vera Mu, and uh, Vintage 2, probably the Fairchild. Then you have a series of other settings here which allow you to kind of focus more in uh, particular settings, mastering uh, a basic setup for bus, loud, hard, drum, smooth, etc. And you could go through these different things just to kind of uh, give yourself a starting point or a quick starting point um, and a basis to kind of build your compression. Because maybe you just set up one of those, you set your threshold, maybe adjust the ratio, tack release a little bit, and you're good to go. And you don't need to do anything else. But if you want to get into shaping, that's where all of this sort of becomes fun. So threshold acts the way that you would normally expect it to. There's two ways to work it. You can leave it fixed and drive the input. This is sort of like uh, the way 1176 is designed, where you have a fixed threshold. You drive more input gain across the threshold, uh, and then you adjust the output gain you know, to balance it out. So that would be just one way to go about it. Otherwise, you could just keep that as is, leave the gain out of it, and then just use your threshold as normal. Nothing unusual about the threshold. It will show uh, a gain reduction on the metering and I'll just show you so you can uh, see that you'll see input level and you'll see game reduction going backward on on the circular area here ratio four to one uh, you can go from zero to one or one to one rather up to a hundred to one uh, so you can get on that double click will give you a reset there um, attack settings go from 0 0.005 milliseconds that's pretty damn fast up to 250 milliseconds, although there are plenty of ways to adapt uh, on that end, right? So we can uh, play around with that. Um, release time, 10 milliseconds, very fast, up to uh, 2.5 seconds. So uh, we have some options there. Uh, there is an auto release characteristic which you can get to with the, by hitting the button here. We'll get into some of these other settings as they apply uh, in a minute. Makeup gain. Right, there's an auto makeup gain. Um, I <laughs> almost none of these work well, <laughs> they always end up being louder. Uh, I haven't found this to be an exception, but I think you have to do something that's more program intelligent, uh, which takes a little bit extra processing. So, uh, no worries on that end. Uh, and then a dry mix control, which is effectively just a wet dry, so this would be all wet. This would mix in dry signals, so you could use it in parallel. There's also a look ahead feature down here. Um, look ahead feature allowing you if you have a fast attack and you're still getting things breaking through allowing you to go up to 20 milliseconds ahead of time uh, for processing uh, and uh, a hold control hold control is an unusual one you don't see it in a compressor that often you see it in gates um, but sometimes a little bit of that can give you just a little bit of breathing room uh, post the transient triggering of the compression before you actually get uh you know before your uh you start your release cycle uh, and sometimes that can be helpful but there's so many other ways to adapt this um they didn't see fit to put it on a separate knob or maybe they couldn't find any real estate for it all right so let's go over some of the settings here if we go over you know just some of the basic things these are pretty straightforward um the knee adapt uh, the knee adjustment here so if we take the knee we can go to a soft knee okay and effectively what this is doing is a sort of simultaneously lowering the threshold and ramping in the ratio whatever ratio setting that you have um vintage most vintage compressors will have um you know they'll have different knee characteristics often if you have like ratio controls like on the 1176 a 20 to 1 would be a hard knee and a four to one would be a soft knee. And then it's a question of just how much. And you could get some of those things by uh, loading up, you know, um, the settings from here and, and get a little bit of that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but otherwise, you could just ad adapt the knee accordingly here, right? So that allows you to sort of sh shape the attack. You can smooth out a transient by softening the knee or you can make it tighter. The other way then there's a range control so the range control just limits the amount of gain reduction that you could have so you could cap your gain reduction so you never end up in a situation where it just kind of goes through the roof and and so that's just a, a simple feature you see that a lot like on the pro c2 and 
Um, that's not an uncommon feature. Uh, there's a couple of other ones here which are kind of interesting. The clamp feature and the de-click feature. So uh, the clamp feature is for use when you have a slow attack. So if you're running something that has a slow attack, and some, occasionally you'll get some things that break through where maybe there's a, a transient that's exaggerated that cuts through a bit too much. So what this would do is it would act like a kind of buffer zone after that to sort of control, depending upon how much you crank this up, to keep those overshoots kind of um, sort of in check. So that's a handy little feature for, for times where you got the general sound, but you got these certain things that just sort of pop through. The clamp feature would allow you to grab onto that. D-click is a way of getting when you have a super fast attack time and you're still getting like a little tick or something that's coming through. Uh, mostly you get like this type of thing with percussion, snares, kicks, and things like that. This would just give you the ability to kind of tone that down. It's not a, a de-clicker, like a noise removal kind of de-clicker, if you're thinking of it that way. Um, and for most keyboards and other instruments, it's not really going to work well. Uh, attack time. All right, so let's move on. So the attack time we have here, and then there's something that sort of falls between the attack and release, which is this pump, punch and pump control. Effectively, um, you know, the way they describe it, that it adjusts both the attack and release characteristics. Um, one way to look at it is um, if you had a linear uh, characteristic with the release, so the, the release took a linear uh, trajectory, uh, you could shape it so that it sort of dips down and takes like a sort of curved path to its endpoint this way or a curved path outward down so either giving you slightly more sustain with the game reduction before dropping or dropping off more rapidly and then shaping down and that's kind of uh that's more or less what you're getting here with the punch and pump control pump control giving you a bit more of that uh that sort of rapid dip quick movement and the punch kind of doing the opposite so you get uh like the uh, release characteristic of the compression carries a little bit longer. So you're just shaping it one way or another. And again, vintage components will exhibit those sort of characteristics. Um, so this is relative to the existing release time. There's an auto-release feature here which negates the control, right? So there's nothing that gives you... Sometimes with auto-releases, you get it as a relative control. So um, the auto-release will just basically follow the trajectory of the sustain signal and apply compression accordingly. Otherwise, it'll strictly follow your release characteristic, and then there are two ways to shape it here. So whatever release time... Um, that And if I could make a suggestion, give me some musical timings. That's like a really good way to kind of quickly find a release setting on a, a compressor, and then you can adapt it accordingly. Um, so we have our normal release setting. And then there's a feature here which allows you to shape it. One is called Tight. Tight is a feature that allows you to um, compensate for low frequency content. So as we crank it up to the right, what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up the low frequency compression. So it'll give you a tighter sound on the low end. Great for kick drums, basses, things like that. Or you can make it open up a little bit if it's a little bit deficient, allowing you to kind of get more breathing movement in that area, which might help to bring in some warmth to a particular sound, like a vocal or something along those lines. Uh, next is a sensitive control, and the sensitivity control, is it sensitivity? Sensitive control, adapts the um, release to the transient length. So this is an, another odd one where you have some transients that are longer or wider or perhaps more prominent, louder uh, or softer. And what this is doing is this is essentially allowing you to sort of give you some equanimity um, between the two. So it'll actually adapt the attack and release characteristics according to how hard the transient comes through, how wide it is and how long it is. Okay. All right. So we got that. We got the makeup gain. We got all of this. A couple of other controls here real quick. Uh, one is apparently compressors exhibit an odd harmonic distortion. Um, uh, I never quite knew that that was exactly what it was, and it tends to be on the high frequency. There's always been a little bit of an upper frequency edge that you get with compression, and uh, and apparently it has to do with the attack release characteristics. Um, maybe uh, oversampling, you know, does something to that uh, to help uh, alleviate some of that effect, or whatever. But what's interesting is that you can actually shape the sound here. Um, 
to move it away from that more high frequency to make it warmer. So sometimes if you get the compressor setting the way that you like, but you want to sort of soften the attack, sometimes you can do that with the knee control, right, to sort of soften the edginess of the attack. But you can also go to the even and sort of just soften the frequency content that's added in there, harmonic content. Uh, feedback feeds forward style. Um, this is something you see on as an option on the API 2500. Two different styles of compression. One just responds to the incoming signal. Whatever the settings are, it just goes. That will give you a tighter, cleaner form of compression. When you go to the, I'm sorry, uh, feedback, uh, feed forward. When you go to feedback in in its design in VCA components, um, what it does is it feeds some of the outback uh, output signal uh, post compression, feeds that back into the sidechain circuit or the trigger circuit, so that what happens is essentially is you get more sustained. It's sort of giving you a little bit of an auto release. So as you have longer sustains, it will feed some of that gain back in and the release will sort of subsequently slow down. So what you get is effectively a warmer sound with the feedback control, uh, a cleaner, crisper sound with the feed forward. And then there's a peak RMS compression balance control. Um, and what this does, if it's all the way set like this, which it is by default, it will operate as peak compression. So it will be responding to the transient and uh, that will determine what the settings of the compressor are. And this is the way most compressors effectively work. It's the transient that triggers the compression, and then whatever the settings are for the release and the tack and the shaping of the release and all of that is what affects your sustain signal. However, you can shift it so that it leans towards the RMS signal. So that becomes um, what it effectively does is it slows down. It's a way of kind of shaping the release characteristics uh, in a way that's sort of more musical. Um, so you can kind of, depending upon what the purpose of your compression is, you can adapt accordingly. So loads of options. And <laughs> let's, uh, let's play a little bit of audio and, uh, and let's see if we can kind of dial into this a little bit more and go through some of the settings. So, uh, first off, I just have some drums here. Let's just start with that. Maybe I can... Uh, just so I can access my mute controls here. All right, so because I have a, a very fast attack here, so we're getting a pretty aggressive compression. So let's just focus on this for a little bit. Let's start by um, adapting the knee control here. So you can hear, see how I can soften the the effect of the compression or make it tighter with the hard. Right. So and that just allows you to control basically where it sits in the mix, right? How forward driving is it, right? How aggressive is the compression when it kicks in? And obviously you can lighten up that compression by lowering the ratio, okay? Uh, by default, it comes at a plus six, sort of, a, I don't know, medium-ish knee, I guess. Um, but uh, I often, that playing with that one control is huge, right? And just in terms of being able to shape the way that the attack is presented right in the mix uh let's see i don't know if there's i'm curious because there's that cymbal crash that cuts through initially just see if i throw on the clamp here what that does perfect a <laughs> little bit okay uh, then I don't think the D click there's anything in this particular thing. This would just basically another way of softening the uh, uh, transient a little bit would be the D click. So 
so if you want that sort of you, you you can use the hard knee to sort of get that that tightness and that edge and then you can throw in the d-click to kind of keep the the snappiness from coming out if you want the drums to sort of set back in the mix and drive the groove while something else is up in the front maybe the vocal or whatever um i also wanted to show here uh the shape of this i'm going to set my release time here to something that's closely resembling a uh i don't know if it's an eighth note given the tempo or 16th note but uh kind of set a release time here Let's So here you can catch the uh, pumping and breathing uh, effect here. This works perfect, great for a parallel situation where you kind of want to mix something in. So that's the pump control, right? So that's the one that's sort of giving you the uh, shaping, the release characteristic. So it drops off initially more quickly um, before, you know, filling out its cycle and returning to no game reduction. So let's, let's see what it sounds like if we sort of mix in a little bit of the dry signal. So that's a cool way to kind of breathe a little bit of life in into um, you know just a drum sound, just working it that way. On the other side, the punch control should add a bit of warmth to the sound. If it compresses at all. Hmm. Wow. That's interesting. All right, let me just uh, go back here for a second. You got a bit of warmth in it because I, I think the one thing that sort of messes me up here and, and what's happening is that it's also when you're doing this, it's also softening the attack at the same time. And that's why the gain reduction was disappearing there. Um, and then with the pump setting, it's obviously tightening up the aggressiveness of the attack as well as shaping the release. So it's more than just the one. It's actually the both. But it does give you the ability to kind of help to shape you know, the body and some of the characteristics of the sound. Let's go back here to the pump control. And then, uh, you know, uh, let's actually, let's focus on this, which is um, the tightness control. So this would be one way of sort of bringing the low end in a little bit tighter with the compression. So let's play with that. So you can hear how it, one, if you go all the way over to the right, is tightening up the low end. And on the other side, it's loosening up the low end, right? So if I just go back and just focus on that, particularly with the kick drum and, and the ambient energy around the kick drum, just notice how it focuses it to the right, how it lets it kind of breathe more to the left. Okay. And
And then I'm not sure the sensitivity control will hear much of anything here, just with the differences of the transient. But maybe it will have a difference in the effect with the kick and the snare, since the transient length of the two and those are the primary triggers um, are are different. It's a four on the floor, but the backbeat stands out more. Right. That's actually a pretty cool control that it seems to in this particular case because it's just on a on a, a stem or a bus return for the drums uh give a nice balance there between or give you some way to balance the way that the kick and the snare are keying the compression or triggering the compression and the way it works so again you see like a lot of amazing shaping controls uh, within here which is uh super cool um, let's just go to the uh, peak and RMS here. Uh, maybe this is better with a bass. I have one set up there. Um, but oh, actually, let's go to the feedback feed forward setting, right? So this is the tighter sound. Notice that it's changing the like uh, what would basically be the ratio, right? So if I change the ratio, that's what's going on here, and it's changing the ratio um, as I'm adapting this. So that's an interesting thing that I didn't understand, or the way that they're adapting this in, or maybe their conception of a feedback feed forward is different than my understanding, and and that doesn't mean I'm right. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, as I understand it, um, what you should get generally is a bit of a warmer sound and then we come a bit more through with the bass so we could load up there the one other thing before we move over to the bass sound is just the odd even harmonic just because this shows up um uh, more evidently in in drums Right, so here you can kind of shape a little bit and control how much of that sort of fuzziness that's sort of allowed through there, you know, kind of give it a little bit of a warming uh, characteristic, which is uh, also a cool option. Or right, let's just go through uh, some of the different settings here. Um, I can keep these settings and then adapt them uh, to different uh, uh, options here. So once I select this, you got the Brit VCA. Uh, Glue VCA says E channel or EG uh, SSL channel, bus compressor for the SSL, API, um, DBX160, uh, the RED3 uh, compressor by Focus, right? Uh, I believe this is a distressor. Uh, the two FETs are the um, 1176s, LA2A33609, I guess, Manly Varamu, and I guess uh, the uh, Fairchild. Let's just kind of go through now. Uh, as I select them, I think I may have to do it here with the arrow. So just kind of follow the name here just to check out the different sound.
actually that's pretty cool just then quickly kind of going through the mall you really get you could really hear a lot of the color and actually all of the characteristics going all the way through to my ear very 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 well matched what i would expect particularly the dbx 160 you know it just has like this certain sound with the attack that's like unique you just can't seem to reproduce it with any other compressor that's out there it's a unique thing so uh, uh, kudos to them for that that's actually quite cool um, and then obviously you have the other presets for stuff let me just show those other uh, last couple features here um, with the bass so this is a bass up from scratch let's just see what we got here This would be a good place to use the D-click, maybe. All right, so that would give you a that would give you a warmer characteristic. versus one that's kind of breathes a bit more, right? So you have some control there. We could also soften the attack if it's a little bit too clicky with the odd even. Right, so that's another option. Uh, we'll come back to the uh, peak uh, or mess. We could uh, put the punch control up a little bit. Pump is probably too much there. We could also just soften the knee. Um, oh, or let's see, uh, we could also use the tight control here if we wanted to shape the uh, bass sound a little bit to make the low end a little bit tighter. So that's actually quite a cool control there to kind of shape, you know, the low end of the base. There's sorry, just like a million ways that you could use it. <laughs> uh, just all the different controls here. The other one is the peak RMS. So it, when it's RMS, it will have a tendency to just sort of, um, it will drive. Uh, let me see if I can find the right section here where there's more sustaining. Uh, it will shape the compression so it will uh, be more responsive to the RMS signal. So you'll get, and whichever compression is greater is what it will kind of respond to, uh, whether it's peak or RMS. If you had a balance, um, you're just basically tilting it in favor one way or the other. Right, so it just allows us to kind of shape a little balance in there just so that the release is kind of responding a bit more, you know, to the RMS when it sustains out. And uh, this also kind of favors uh, a little bit into the sensitivity control here, um, where in uh, the verse section where it's very tight... We have this and then when we go to the chorus and it's more sustaining right it helps to kind of shape the release characteristics accordingly so 
a lot in here, a lot of you could really get lost in this. I think you could really use it. It would be great if I were to have a suggestion to have like a simple controls version, you know, this one button that you would click that would give you just the basic settings and then you could open up the palette for the individuals just for graphically to kind of make it a little bit um, easier to just, to just quickly grab onto. But if you follow those pink or you could change the colors if you want, uh, controls, you're getting your primary settings right there. So it's at least not graphically uh, out of the ballpark here. There's so much to go through with this. And you go through like a whole variety of sounds, just the way that you can shape and really control things. Um, it's uh, it's hard to imagine <laughs> that you can uh, have a whole lot more options. Maybe the Tone Projects um, uh, compressor um is uh is probably the one it has the closest to the number of ways that you can shape and control all the attack release characters their side chain is way off the hook that's unison is that plugin but uh this one uh is pretty amazing a uh, lot lot to kind of play with and kind of dig into and the more i do uh, the more i like it so uh, there you have it plugin of the week from three body technology uh through the plugin alliance the uh, Cenozoics Compressor.